Alrighty, fellow warriors, generals, tacticians, and strategists, welcome back to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. One of the greatest parts of Bannerlord is the vast detail and variety of landscapes, cities, castles, and towns the game provides for us to explore. Most are unique and many are just stunningly beautiful, essentially allowing us to step back into time and wander the dirt roads of villages from a thousand years ago. Still, even greater than their beauty is their use for you in the game as tactical arenas, locations where your greater tactical execution and advanced strategies can be put to work as we seek more and more diabolical ways to vanquish our enemies. In this new series, we explore some of my favorite villages, both from the perspective of their sheer beauty and exploration, but more importantly as ideal places to massacre your foe when you are in a tough spot. Alright friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. This YouTube channel is dedicated to all things Bannerlord related, but especially Advanced Field Command and Battlefield Tactics. And we are raiding a village in this episode, uh, not because we hate these particular peasants, not because we're sadistic and like burning down huts, uh, but because we want to defend at this village. Uh, this again is part of our series uh, defending certain villages here and the idea behind these is to basically give you alternative lands, uh, landscapes, alternative areas to fight your enemy in Bannerlord. Now you can see the gangs all here, right? We've got a very strong army. In fact, I don't uh, suggest that this first battle is going to be uh, a difficult battle. It doesn't look like there's a huge amount of sturgeons coming. Maybe this is seven or 800, uh, but nevertheless, we're going to give these guys a shot here. It's almost an even fight according to the power meter, which my response is LOL, right? This is gonna be a destructive massacre uh, we're actually going to, I'm going to change out some equipment here uh, just so that my character doesn't destroy the whole universe in this battle. Uh, we'll wield one of our hammers here. Uh, and frankly, I'm just not going to be too worried about doing damage with my character. I'll probably throw javelins and ride around a little bit on the battlefield. Uh, but with our army here, uh, we're just going to be able to devastate this sturgeon force because of the particular landscape of this village. Uh, do a last couple, a few upgrades here. Uh, actually, I won't I won't waste your time with too much of this uh, on to the village battle we get here So 838 sturgeons uh, Probably not the most uh, powerful armies we're fighting here, but nevertheless into battle we go now I will follow this up with a custom battle where we use scrubs and ordinary troops in battle uh, To again fight on this same map and show you tactically how advantageous it is, right? We're not just going to show you our powerful army here crushing it. We're going to show you uh, a mediocre force as well. We'll get a few of these captains assigned, but honestly, this part's, uh, you, I, I could probably skip this as well. Uh, I just like to have some semblance of order to my to my army here. So a bunch of skirmishers and shock troops in our third core. Uh, and let's flank, frankly, the rest of these guys. We can just dump them on the eighth core and start setting up our formations here. So obviously, we're going to use water. We're going to slow the enemy down. We have lots of ranged units. In fact, the fourth is a crossbow division, and that's so that I can square these bad boys, right? For defense, if they're taking an onslaught, we're going to square them now they'll be over here on the right flank and we'll give them calf to protect them here in the water uh, I got the second core and eighth core I think we'll give them the eighth these guys have javelins they're high-level Knights and so those archers will have a row of protection there uh, this right side we're gonna have more of our troops we're gonna position the first infantry I'd like a few more guys than 40 so we'll put about 50 50 guys in that division and they'll be in a shield wall to start but probably shifting to a distractionary square and something that we will drag around the battlefield. Uh, I'm hoping this series uh, can have two different types of defenses. Uh, we're going to have skirmishers here as well, but we're basically going to have easier defenses and harder defenses. I would consider this an easier de in defense. And what I mean by that is that this is not going to be the most complex complex tactics you've ever seen. We're basically luring the enemy in, and then we're going to attack them with multiple forces. Of course, with ranged units, the skirmishers, the 6th division there, and then the 3rd. Now, I want to give these guys a little bit of cover protection. I probably don't need to do this, but we're going to do it because we have this cavalry. They're just going to hold 
hold that left flank in a shield wall strictly defensive in this battle. And what I'm hoping is that this battle can be easily replicated even by a relatively inexperienced commander. If you just literally like uh, em uh, emulate exactly what we're doing here with your formations and units, you should be able to maul the enemy with a very minimal amount of actually micromanaging here. Out of the fucking way. These guys in my way here. Uh, and what a beautiful little village this is, right? Like it's an absolutely picture-perfect fishing village that we're going to defend. Uh, the key is the water. The key is this slope here. Uh, and you can see they have almost 700 troops, right? So we're out number two and a half to one. Uh, but that's just not going to matter one iota. They've got to come through these couple different areas. So they're channeled into tight lines. Uh, and this is... I don't know. This is the kind of battle we might lose 30 or 40 men. We're just going to absolutely destroy this force. They have some elite troops. I see some cataphract, elite cataphract and vanguard Ferris, but that shit ain't going to matter at all uh, once we start to uh, execute these savage tactics. So the idea, of course, is to use that uh, first infantry square. God, look at this beautiful place. I just want to have a picnic here. Yeah, but we're going to use this square, pull them into the water, slow down the enemy, assault them from both sides with ammunition, right? We're going to be attacking them with archers, crossbow, and javelin. Uh, and then we'll form that unit into a square. And then once the enemy's sort of fixated on the square, then we will devour them with our shock troops, skirmishers, and other elite divisions. These guys just standing here. This is about as bad as AI could work, too. They're just literally standing here. We open up fire, and it's just a complete destructive wave of javelins and arrows and, and whatnot. They've reached our infantry line, so we'll start to kite. We wanted to sort of put it out there like bait because we want the enemy to attack those guys. Uh, meanwhile, over here, the third and the sixth. In fact, I want to spread the third out so these guys can use their throwing weapons, too. These guys have a nice high ridge here overlooking the water, protected by that rock, protected by the cavalry behind them. Uh, this is basically a perfect... Perfect setup here to destroy the enemy. All right, horse archers are told get the fuck out of here, go engage the enemy. Instead, they're standing there like dipshits. I'm not sure why. Uh, you see, the enemy is fixated on the square, so we're going to pull some of our units back so that they continue to chase the square. As they're chasing them, the screen is just absolutely packed with the death spam of the enemy being destroyed here. The skirmishers are going nuts, the archers are going crazy. They haven't even reached our square yet. These archers over here, I might just square them just to kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, of course, we've got our 8th Corps there in front of them, basically defending them from any cav charge. The enemy's all excited and they're roaring loudly and they're just being exterminated here. Now we can charge with the 3rd and the 6th, so the enemy's weak flank here, as they're occupied with the enemy, gets absolutely skewered and destroyed by heavy-ranked, high-ranked uh, uh, shock troops and skirmishers, and the enemy's already wilting. In fact, they didn't even reach our crossbow division. One guy holding a shield here is kind of uh, uh, terrifiedly approaching them. Over here, they, 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 like that, they got like two kills. It looks like they're finally getting a kill or two. Uh, but obviously things are going very badly for the enemy. They're getting mauled over here. Uh, and they're already regrouping. In fact, that whole wave just got annihilated. There's like these 20 guys trying to flee. Of course, we're not going to let these guys get away. We're going to just mow them down, beat the shit out of them with our hammer. Uh, and, and that was that whole first wave. It just basically liquidated itself. And again, that's probably 500 troops, 450 troops that just died in like 60 seconds. In fact, that looks like they're routing already. That horseman is, they're not re, well, they could be re, no, they're just flat out routing. This battle is already over 800 against our 300, uh, and it's just no contest. Now, fortunately, uh, like I said, we are going to pair this with a custom battle. Uh, so you not only see the effects of a very high ranked army here, of course, we utterly vanquished, annihilated, eviscerated, choose your adjective, this force. Uh, but we will now try this with a, a less powerful army. I mean, that is 625 guys put down in a blink of an eye. We lost 13 guys. It is fucking dipshit. Must have broken up with his wife last week and she took the kids and all the money because he looks suicidal. We'll help him out here and his misery. Uh, and again, this town with the ridge there, with this water here where the enemy has to come over that ridge into the water uh, to approach your archers, utterly devastating, right? This is just a savage battlefield for defending. Right, so you see the effects of a, a strong army. 
Uh, now we will reload this. I'll save some time for you. We'll jump right into a custom battle and we'll fight the exact same battle effectively with mediocre troops and hope for a similar result. All right, so we've reloaded this as a custom battle. We're going to play as Batania here, defending Burgum against the Northern Empire. Uh, you can see we have all the units selected for both sides. And what this does is it basically allows for an average uh, equal fight on both sides. You can see both sides here, we have access to one mercenary group and then all the normal units. That way their army theoretically is the same strength as ours with this exception, right? We're going to give them 90 more troops, uh, theoretically 20% more troops. They should be a significant favorite here. Uh, and we'll see if we can't destroy them with tactics in the same battlefield. Now, I think the other thing we'll do is we will actually run, uh, I think I think we'll let the AI run. I can run it kind of on fast using the RTS mod, uh, but we will, we will uh, let the AI run this battle afterwards and see how the AI does on the same battlefield. And of course, the purpose of that will be to show that tactics also matter here. All right, so the sixth core, these are skirmishers. What I'm trying to do here, there's an awful lot of javelin guys in here, even though I'm assigning these guys javelins. Uh, I struggle with this sometimes too there, fellas. Sometimes, no matter how you select things here, uh, it's difficult to isolate your, your javelin throwers, your throwing axe guys. I want this sixth division to be a skirmisher division. Uh, so I'm going to play with these settings for a little bit more. It's actually not too bad. About two-thirds or three-quarters of these guys have throwing weapons. So I think we'll call that good. Uh, and this secondary example is going to be an even simpler example of that, of that battle. Right? We're going to basically limit ourselves to six divisions here. We might do seven. I think six is going to work. Now, the skirmishers literally put their backs to the rocks there. They're in a shield wall, and uh, the enemy coming in here is basically going to be vulnerable to those skirmishers. You see how they're protected. They're kind of around the corner there. They can't be shot. And, of course, if the infantry tries to attack them, they're more than capable of fighting on their own. Now, the fourth archers, I'm going to divide my archers up in this battle a little differently. They don't have crossbow, the, the, the Batanians. They have archers. What I want is an elite division of archers. So this right side here, we're going to have these guys be elite archers. And we're going to use them differently than the weaker archers. First, we're going to put them out front, right? Because they can handle enemy attacks better. And they can also deal more damage that way. The other thing, too, is we're going to use their ammunition readily. Because they have more arrows, we will leave them on open fire. Now, over here, we're also putting Jav Cav, right? Most of these guys have uh, the Javelins. I, I can't remember what they're called. But the Batanian uh, Mounted Skirmisher, I think, or something like that, is a pretty decent unit. And that'll help slow down enemies over there. And they'll have Javelin fire. Uh, now, right in here, we want the fifth archers, right? So we're going to put these fifth... Uh, I beg your pardon. These are the fourth archers. We'll assign this guy to the fifth. Uh, the fourth archers are our weaker archers, and we're actually going to have them hold fire and stay towards the rear at the beginning of the battle, right? We're not going to use them early on because they will run out of ammo very early on if we're not careful. Now, the first division, the idea is just like the last battles to square and then attack that enemy with the sixth. Again, throw javelins, throw throwing axes while they're attacking that first. Uh, we may even maul them with archers on the other side uh, and have a very similar battle here. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to do this too. We're going to we're going to use the overhead view, the RTS mod. That way you can very clearly see these tactics. I know some people suggest that they see this a lot better uh, than than the ground field tactics. Uh, and so we're going to do that, right? We can zoom in over here and see that the enemy has has a pretty pretty good sized army, right? It's a good sized army and they have good looking troops. Uh, and of course, again, we're outnumbered by 20 percent. This is a battle. If you auto resolve this, you're probably going to lose uh, and if you use the AI, you're probably going to lose, although we will test that uh, after this battle. So these guys back here, like I said, this fourth division, we're going to have them hold fire. We're also going to hold fire with the skirmishers. I know this is micromanagement and some of you out there get uncomfortable with that. But what we're wait basically doing is waiting until the enemy's closer for these three divisions to shoot. I'm going to tell the third division, hold fire, and again. So now we know from memory's sake that the third, fourth, and sixth division are on hold fire, but these guys aren't, and this is why. Right? These guys have two quivers of arrows. I want them shooting as soon as the enemy is in range. Uh, and again, you can see there we're outnumbered by 90. I want them shooting right away. Uh, that way, those guys are doing damage before the enemy even gets close to us. Right? These guys are dead men. Uh, he got hit right in the head with a javelin. And there are some skirmishers still in our first division, right? That's not our skirmishers, the sixth division, doing that damage. That's the first. 
All right, so we're patient here, right? We're like Mel Gibson at the Battle of Falkirk. We are going to be patient. We are going to, actually, I'm sorry, the Battle of Sterling is supposed to be Sterling Bridge. We are basically letting the enemy come in on us here, and then we're going to open fire, right? Now, these guys are guarding that right flank. I could move them over, but we're basically going to play defense with that third division to start this battle. I say to start because we may use them offensively later. Enemies coming in here, and a few of them are kind of attacking our skirmishers there, but not that many. Now, we open fire with the 6th. All these archers start shooting. At first, infantry goes into a square, and these guys, this 6 skirmishers, now that the enemy's sort of turning their backs to us, watch this shit. Fire, open fire. They're now fully ignoring these guys, but what an angle, right? You just see the skirmisher, or the, the javelins and axes just eviscerating the enemy. They still haven't even reached our square. Uh, we'll pull it back even further here. These archers over here are shooting the enemy on the side, and in some cases the back. And look at the death span, right? This is the same ranked forces us, and it's an absolutely destructive massacre. Now on the right, you know, we're being defended. This, this cab division, the enemy's kind of trickling in here, but it's not really bothering us. The skirmishers are fine. Uh, the infantry is fine. Our archers are defended. All of these archers, in fact, are free. The only thing that's hitting them is dead horses after, or, or uh, 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 un unhorsed riders after their, after their rider is killed. Uh, they're attacking our square vigorously, but all I'm doing is moving it around here so that they can get shot in the back, right? As I move it, you zoom in here. Now, the skirmishers are fighting. They're kind of fighting that horse. But as these guys attack, these archers over here, what's happening to them? They're getting shot in the back. Well, we know where those arrows are coming from, right? It's coming from over here. All these savage high rank archers, Batanian fiend champs and whatnot, are absolutely unloading on the enemy. Now, the enemy does have archers back there, but this battle is over already. Even though they had 20% uh, more troops than us and of the same quality troops, this battle is literally already over. It's been a complete massacre. Uh, and we will just sort of finish it up. Let, let's just say it was a close battle. It's not, but let's let's say for the sake of conversation, it was a close battle. How would we defeat these archers? Well, in concentration, basically. We want to lead with shield walls. So I'm going to gather up these divisions and start putting them in shield wall, F2, F2. And we're going to start facing the archers on similar lines. And what I mean by that is uh, the units don't want to be like, you don't want to have one unit far ahead of the other ones, right? If you have one unit that's really close to the enemy, even in a shield wall, they'll suffer a lot of losses. So we're going to set our units here, especially the shield walls, in relatively uh, similar uh, distances from the enemy. And then we're going to advance our archers. Now, you could absolutely F1, F3 from this stage of the battle. This battle's already over, and it would be sloppy, but you would still win. I'm just showing you what I would do if this was a close battle, and we needed to finish off this, what is it, 135 archers here. Uh, you know, say we had 100 troops, it would be a difficult challenge. This is what I would do. I'd move our cav lines up in shield wall, right? You see some deaths there. In fact, they're killing guys that don't have shields. Veteran foxmen, those guys don't have shields. Uh, they're just vulnerable to archers. This is, a, you know, this is a problem you're going to deal with. Uh, meanwhile, on this side, the second division is coming in, and these guys, we're going to charge early on. These guys are in good shape. They're in a shield wall, and they're perpendicular to the enemy line. Once we get them in on a shield wall, these guys are going to charge. Purpose for that, of course, is to knock the enemy around, put them on their ass, put a big horse in their face, while the rest of these troops come up and fucking maul them. Now, the archers are doing major damage, right? These guys are largely uh, unaffected. They're just firing away. Uh, and the enemy's dealing with all this heavy heavy horse and infantry now charging into their midst. Over here, the fifth, uh, yeah, the, the elite fifth corps is charging up here. Uh, and the enemy's really getting trucked at this stage. Of course, they're outnumbered like two or maybe even three to one. This was not going to be a battle anyways. But this is just how I would fight it if it was a close battle. You see Cav is rampaging through here, knocking guys around. Uh, and now our infantry lines are reaching them as well, adding death to their misery. Uh, it looks like a full-on rout. They're still scoring a few kills here and there, uh, but this battle is over. And again, so, you know, it's sort of the summarize basically what just happened is even though we're outnumbered by 20% by an equal strength army with 20% more army, right? So they, they should definitely defeat us. We absolutely destroyed them 
uh, using tactics and using this battlefield map, right? Using the water, using that ridge, forcing them to come over that ridge and channel into the water, and then of course flanking them, uh, all the other nasty things we did there. And I'm hoping that this, compared to the first battle, is a little easier and the kind of tactics that even if you're not that experienced, you can easily pull off. This whole series is designed to show you effectively escape hatches. You're out there roaming the dangerous world of Calradia. You get attacked by a savage force. You get cornered. Maybe uh, these towns and going to these little villages might save your life, right? 321 guys left. We didn't even, uh, yeah, we lost barely a third of our troops against 20% more number than us. Uh, this is obviously a resounding success. Uh, now here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to just reload this, right? I go right back into the same menu. In fact, it's the exact same battlefield, the exact same troops for both sides. The battle, we just crushed the enemy. Now what I'm going to do is turn everybody over to the sergeants. Sergeants delegate command is on and basically the AI is taken over. Now, not to, to not bore you, we're going to speed this process up, right? We don't need to watch. Uh, I will try to hone in and describe shit as I see it. Uh, but the, with all the trees and the buildings, it might be a little bit difficult to tell uh, what's going on. There's also the fact that the AI doesn't really have a master plan, right? They kind of make sloppy formations and archers towards the rear sometimes and a little bit of flanking here and there, but for the most part, the enemy does uh, some pretty dumb shit. Still, the point of this is to show you that if you didn't use uh, tactics, in other words, if you were just playing as a sergeant, playing in this battlefield, fighting, this battle might not be so easily won. In fact, I'm not even sure they're going to win. Right? They're getting steered right now by heavy horse. The enemy has a huge uh, mass of infantry pouring to the front lines. The screen is actually quite red. Uh, as the enemy engages uh, the Batanian infantry. Of course, they're not using any squares, they're not flanking, their skirmishers aren't separate, and it's a very ugly battle. At a minimum, but I was gonna say they're holding their, they're not even holding their own. The Batanians are losing a battle here that we just won. Uh, so we'll continue to play this out. At least they found a nice elevation spot here at the back for their archers. These guys stood start, uh, start doing major kills, but they're getting skewered by Cav, right? They're not protecting them. It's a very sloppy endeavor here. They are getting some kills from their archers, right, as the enemy comes up. Uh, but now the enemy infantry is going to be reaching their archers, and it's going to be interesting... I think the Batanians are going to lose this battle. So this is a battle we just won with uh, two-thirds of our force standing. Uh, we'll just speed this up even further here. It's a close battle, but uh, they're very close to losing this. Try to speed this up as fast as we can. But ultimately, again, th this shows the value of the tactics here. The, the, obviously, the AI didn't use this map at all like we used it. In fact, they just totally disregarded the water. And as you can see, they lost, right? The enemy has 46 troops left. Uh, they got this one guy. Presumably, he's running around. They're chasing after him. Uh, but the battle's over, right? This is a battle where if you just delegated command, a lot of guys think F1, F3, or, or, you know, just give command to your sergeants and things will work out fine. Obviously here, they would not. Lose this battle, you're captured, all of that shit. It's horrendous for your campaign. So, you should be subscribing to this channel, right? If you're still using sergeants to command your troops on the battlefield or you're not using some tactics, uh, even just basic tactics like this, then then you definitely need to subscribe, right? You need to jump on board here, friends. I've got all kinds of tutorials like this. We're going to continue to explore the map of Calradia. I, I don't know why they can't find this one guy, but as you can see, this battle is over. Uh, we're going to look for interesting villages for you guys to defend. I'm going to try to pick out a village or two for every single territory. So I don't mean just one for the Imperials, you know, or, or two for the Imperials. We're going to try to get two for the Vlandians, two for the Northern Empire, two for the Southern Empire, and the idea being you can reference these if you're a relatively new campaign and you're having a hard time and you want a map where maybe there's a good chance that you can win a battle that you wouldn't be able to win in the open field this will be your guide you'll be able to come here look up uh uh, and I'll try to, you know, put sort of these on a playlist with the directory. Look for a map, basically, that will help you in your campaign. You'll be able to find a savage battlefield like this where you know you can just emulate what we did here, dominate the enemy, get better at advanced tactics, probably become a better human being, right? You'll become more altruistic. You'll be nicer to your neighbor. You'll take out the little old lady's garbage. 
All right, well, maybe none of that other stuff, but hopefully you have fun and hopefully you get better at Bannerlord. <laughs> All right, friends, let me know what you think of this series. Please subscribe, like I said before. Please make comments and hit that like button. I appreciate it, fellas. Uh, if you have a certain map you want to see me defend, let me know. And with all that said, I will see you guys next time.